Welcome, uh, Chairman Bernanke. I have a couple questions, but first I want to uh, mention that um, I find it awfully frustrating at times when we always talk about inflation and we only talk about the prices. We have prices under control and there's no inflation. We have to realize that the monetary base, the liquidity was doubled in a few short months. To me, there's a lot of inflation out there. It's already inflated. We're in the midst of inflation because the prices haven't gone up. Doesn't mean we don't have the distortion. And it was, it was that system that gave us the financial bubble, the artificially low interest rates, the malinvestment, all the mistakes made. And now we're trying to correct all that by doing the very, very same thing. So uh, I, I think someday we're going to have to address this somewhat uh, differently because I'm not very optimistically that, optimistic that we can solve our problems with more spending and more uh, borrowing and, and, and more inflation in order to solve those, uh, uh, those, those problems. But uh, you answered this question several times, and I want to bring it up again, and that has to do when, when will some of this liquidity be drained? And, and I don't think uh, the answer you've given is very specific, and, and I don't expect that I will get a more specific answer, but I'm going to try. What, what if we have a situation where prices are, uh, which is, you know, not the best measure of inflation, but let's say the consumer price index and the PBI is going up 8 to 10 percent, and there's no economic growth. Where are you then? Because that's not impossible. It's happened. It's happened in our history. It happens throughout the world. It's a common thing. It puts you behind uh, between the rock and the hard place. If you drain, interest rates go up, the economy further crashes. If you don't, you have the explosion. Can, can you give me an idea what you precisely would do if you faced a situation where prices were going up 10 percent with no economic growth? Well, I, th I think that's an unlikely scenario, um, but uh, we certainly would have to take steps to ensure price stability because if inflation gets out of control, we know that has very adverse effects on the economy, both in the medium and long term, and so we would obviously have to address that. Which means you would have to raise interest rates. And it's exactly, I'm sorry, sir, exactly the same problem that is always faced by monetary policy, which is, you know, in a recovery when the economy is starting to grow but has not yet gotten very far perhaps and unemployment is still above where you'd like it to be um, you know you have to take away the punch bowl as someone once said in order to avoid the inflation risk see I, I see this as the the real problem because we practice economic planning through manipulation of money and credit socialism always fails because they don't have a pricing structure interventionism and inflationism fails because we don't have a free market pricing system of money, the in interest rates. Therefore, it, it fails. It, it comes to a conclusion. And inevitably, it leads to a more socialized economy. Just witness what we're talking about. Taking over companies, taking over insurance companies, taking over banks. This, is, this has been the prediction of the free market economists, and yet we continue down this path of socializing our entire economy. But I do want to address one other subject that has to do with, uh, with transparency. And you said you have made a commitment to transparency and openness, which is, is which is very good. And there's a lot of us that want that. And I have dealt with that and have legislation uh, 1207 dealing with that. But in a real sense, uh, I, I know what you're doing here, but you know, the code really protects you from telling us some of the things we'd like to know. Uh, for instance, in 70, 1978, when the uh, GAO was given the authority to audit the Fed, it, it, it put the exclusion in there, but you can't ask these questions. Precisely, if I wanted to know about all your agreements and discussions with foreign central banks, with foreign governments, with international financial organizations, you have no obligation and you haven't volunteered to do this. So is there a way that you would, since you're moving in this direction, move and consider supporting a position where Congress has the right to know these very, very crucial, vital issues dealing with their money. I mean, everything you do deals with their value of their money. Would you ever be open to, to the repeal of some of those provisions? Uh, yes, I would. Now, let me, let me be specific. Um, we have many programs where we lend money, we take collateral, we have, and we obviously are repaid. Um, we have, I just want to assure you, first of all, that we have very substantial oversight and controls. We have, besides internal divisions, which monitor these things, we have an independent IG, and we have an external auditing company, which a private company, which provides audits um, every year and has given us a clean bill of health on all our financial controls, all at the level of Sarbanes-Oxley uh, requirements. 
That being said, um, if Congress needs more information about the operations that we are doing, exactly how we manage our collateral, how we manage our lending, those sorts of things, I think we can talk to you about, about providing more information about that and, if necessary, working with the, the GAO. Where I would be very careful, where I'd like to be just very clear, there's been some discussion of the GAO, quote, um, auditing monetary policy. I don't know what that means, but I certainly would resist any attempt uh, to dictate to the Federal Reserve how to make monetary policy. It's the independence of monetary policy, which is crucial to the maintenance of price stability uh, and economic growth in this country. And uh, that would not be acceptable, but uh, if it's an issue of making sure that we're appropriately managing our systems and, and doing what we say we're doing in terms of our lending, I think, you know, we, we want to be open. We want you to understand that we're taking every precaution to protect the taxpayer. Of course, it's the policy is the only thing that really counts. <laughs>